Here's one of your server sieves. The first thing I would say is this is the exact result we want to have on a standard pass. You keep the ball on your side one to two steps towards your partner. It has great height so you don't have to rush. And it's in the front of the court, the most efficient area for an attack. But let's break down your technique. We'll compare it to a pro and understand details that could affect results at a higher level or tough situations like wind. The first thing we need to recognize is the read so we know what technique to use. Notice it's a low flat driven serve near the tape of the net. It has to have speed to clear the net and because of that speed it will carry to at least half court. Therefore on a low flat driven serve you will never run forward or step into the ball. Here's a pro with a similar serve. Notice how he does not run forward, he just hops two feet to a square base and lets the ball come to him. Notice when you get the read, you take an aggressive step forward, in essence speeding up the ball, and you have a stride base at contact. You probably made this move fearing the ball would land short in the court, but you can see with the contact being so high by your chest, this ball would have kept going towards midcourt. This goes back to knowing and trusting the read of the low flat driven serve. No running forward. Just hop forward into a low base and let the ball come to you. Now, if the reed is arcing and falling in front of you, you could take a run step forward because that ball could fall short in the court. But we are working on the flat driven serve and that has its own technique. The hardest thing about a low driven serve is reading the speed. Is it going to drop to my shins or is it going to accelerate at my face? So when you hop to a square base, you do it lower than where you think the ball is going to be. So if it drops, you just hold, it will drop into you. If it doesn't drop, you just push back into it. And if it accelerates, the square base gives you a chance to push to the side of the ball and reposition your platform behind it. We call this the push out and it needs to be practiced. Notice how the pro base is low, so her chest is at the path of the ball and her platform is below the path of the ball in case it drops. As she times her legs back into the ball and realizes it's high above her belly button, she pushes to the side and re-angles her platform with the ball. Here's another example of the push out. Base is under the ball in case it drops and then moves out of the way and repositions his platform with the ball. Such an important move especially in beach volleyball with the wind that can make it drop. And you need a square base to make this move. Here's an example of a challenging wind at the back making the ball drop. Notice how he bases so his platform is lined up with the path of the ball. He did not cover the drop. And when it drops, he has to reach into the ball, speeding it up and colliding into it. He served me on that same side. I made sure to line up my chest and cover the drop with my platform. And the ball didn't drop, but I had the push out technique to push out of the way and realign my platform with the ball. Going back to this example, he hops to the chest, platforms covering the drop, and as he pushes back with the ball, it is not high so he can stay square and doesn't need the push out. If you start to base where you think the ball is going and then it suddenly starts to drop way in front of you, the natural tendency is to quickly step towards it. What you want to do is drop to the knee in the crouch position and let the ball come to you at a lower point. This way you are still and in control instead of striding and colliding into the ball. Watch how this player drops to the knee in the crouch position as the serve drops. The player reads the low driven serve. And right when the ball gets right about here, he decides where he's going to hop his square base to. After he hops to the base, the ball starts to drop. He doesn't rush after it. He drops the knee straight down to stay beneath the ball and lets the ball get to him. Notice how he only drops to one knee, the inside knee, to keep his shoulders angled towards his partner. He keeps his outside foot planted in the sand so he can push up if he needs to adjust to the pass or to get up quicker to get ready for an attack. And when the ball gets right about here, this player realizes that he's going to use that outside foot to push up into the pass. So let's get rid of this stride base. And remember, when you get the read of a low flat driven serve right at you, 
Do not run forward. Hop into a square base beneath the path of the ball. If the ball stays high by your chest, use your push out. If the ball drops low, use your crouch. And lastly, if the serve consistently keeps dropping in front of you, position yourself a step towards the net before the serve. Knowing these details can help, but you still need to get your reps in practice. Here's a drill I'm doing, practicing the technique of the low flat driven serve right at me. I toss the ball to hit the wall at about my height and firm enough so it bounces right straight back to me. I have a square base straight down, no running forward. My platform is extended and away from my body so I can't swing it into the ball. Always pass to a target. I like to use a trash can to shoot some hoops and make sure your pass goes at least above your head and drops into the target, not straight down to the target. Also place the target one to two steps to your left or one to two steps to your right, simulating passing towards your partner. Notice on this one, I am working on staying square at contact or right in front of the ball. I really have to use my legs to push with the ball so I can keep my platform angled towards the target. If I don't use my legs, my platform would swing into the ball, shooting the ball straight up over my head. Some serves are too high and fast for us to stay in front of because it will hit us too high on our arms or our chest. This is why we practice the push out. To practice the push out, face low so the ball is lined up with your chest. Let the ball get close so you have to push to the side of it towards your target. Reposition your platform with the ball and behind it. Make sure you tilt your shoulders to angle the ball forward. It will take some practice getting the timing of the push out, but once you get it, you will be more confident to base for the drop and still be able to pass the ball if it doesn't drop. Remember, the high arcing ball that's dropping in front of you, you're allowed to step forward, have a run step forward, and then base. So practice a few of those. Throw it high on the wall, do a step forward, and then base. Always attaching your platform away from your body and using your legs so you don't swing your platform. You can practice your push out with a bigger step, base more underneath the ball, and push out towards your target. Then mix the driven and arcing to practice the different footwork. Step forward and base on the arcing, and just base on the driven. 